हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई कमल शर्मा वेलकम्स यू ऑल टू दिस प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ इंग्लिश वाला हेयर वी हैव बॉट यू विद द अवर स्ट्रेटजी वाला इनिशिएटिव इन ऑर्डर टू बूस्ट योर बोर्ड एग्जामिनेशन हेयर वी आर डूइंग एवरीथिंग पॉसिबल टॉप फाइव क्वेश्चन वी एग्जाम स्ट्रेटजी हाउ टू राइट इन बोर्ड एग्जाम और हाउ टू क्विकली रिवाइज द होल सिलेबस तो वी आर ब्रिंगिंग इन दैट व्यू विद द केमिस्ट्री लेक्चर where we will cover all the chapters of term 2 chemistry in two parts for a quick revision of yours also we will be discussing on how to solve the problems how to tackle the exam and how you can score a very good marks in your board examination so let's start the lecture with our first chapter which is nothing but the most important chapter of organic chemistry aldehyde ketone and carboxylic acids so now we are going to discuss the first chapter which is aldehyde ketones and carboxylic acids so let's discuss how we can prepare these compounds so the common method of preparation of aldehyde and ketones involve the ozonolysis of alkene what is a alkene alkenes are basically unsaturated hydrocarbon containing double bond between carbon atoms and when these are ozonolyzed using ozone and ccl4 and in the second step they are hydrolyzed using zinc and water this is known as reductive hydrolysis reductive hydrolysis because of the presence of zinc and the easy method for formation of the compound is we have to break this double bond we have to break the friendship between these two carbon atoms the double bond is broken and two new oxygen atoms are joined on this double bond site so the ozonolysis of one carbon double bond carbon will give you two new carbonyl groups suppose we have multiple double bonds then each double bond will be broken and double bond o will be adding to that double bonded site the second method is our general our most useful method which is from grignard reagent now we all know that grignard reagent is a versatile organic compound which can be used to prepare most of the compounds so what we do here first we take an alkyl halide and react it with magnesium metal it forms alkyl magnesium halide which is known as grignard reagent this is known as grignard reagent and now there are two different parts to prepare an aldehyde or ketone either we can react it over a carboxylic acid derivative this g can be chlorine this g can be ester group acid anhydride group or acid amide as well but the trick here is that it should not have any acidic hydrogen because if acidic hydrogen is there then grignard does only one work that it abstract the acidic hydrogen and forms an alkene so remember here we cannot use carboxylic acid because it has an acidic hydrogen and there will be formation of alkene so what happens here the alkyl group of grignard reagent replaces the g group and forms rcoor and basically most of the time there will be a carbon chain so most of the time we get only ketone from this process aldehydes are not very much useful method for this compound and similarly if we make them react with alkyl cyanide the same thing happens this attack on the carbon a double bond between carbon and nitrogen is broken and imine is formed now remember here students if we have carbon single bond nitrogen this is known as amine carbon double bond nitrogen this is known as imine and carbon triple bond nitrogen this is known as cyanide or nitrile so hydrolysis of all these three compounds upon hydrolysis each carbon nitrogen bond is converted into a hydroxide group so when we have one carbon nitrogen bond one oh is there in case of double bond there are 2 oh and in case of triple bond there are 3 oh and all of you have heard that 
carbon cannot accommodate two hydroxyl group due to steric reason so whenever there are two hydroxyl group water is removed and it is converted into carbonyl group when there are three one of oh is remained remaining and two oh are converted into carbonyl groups so hydrolysis of amine imine and cyanide will give us alcohol ketone aldehyde and carboxylic acid respectively and the same thing is happening here that's why this step must require a hydrolysis this does not require the hydrolysis but this must require the hydrolysis so here after hydrolysis the remaining carbon double bond nitrogen is being converted into carbon double bond oxygen again if we use hcn hydrogen cyanide it is acidic weak acidic and that's why aldehyde cannot be prepared from this process so grignard reagent is mainly used for preparation of ketones using carboxylic acid derivatives or alkyl cyanide now the next method is oxidation method so the oxidation method is quite useful for alcohol to ketones and aldehyde one degree alcohol will lose two of its hydrogen and convert into aldehyde which on further oxidation will give you carboxylic acid similarly two degree alcohol will lose two of its hydrogen and convert into ketone and ketone cannot be oxidized further so here the if we see that aldehyde is a intermediate product so if we want to prepare aldehyde we must be selective about the choice of reagent we have to select the choice of oxidizing agent so we have mainly five oxidizing agents neutral line alkaline or acidic kmnophore its ph can be greater than equal to or less than 7 acidified k2cr207 potassium dichromate these are these two are the quite strong oxidizing agent pyridinium chromyl chloride pyridinium dichromate chromic anhydride in acetone this is also known as jones reagent so chromium is a quite a powerful oxidizing agent but in absence of h plus ion its power reduces so whenever we are using chromium in absence of acidic medium acetone does not give h plus pyridinium neutralize the h plus pyridine neutralize the h plus so this will convert 1 degree alcohol to aldehyde and stops the reaction but these two reagent which are strong they will convert 1 degree alcohol into carboxylic acid carboxylic acid and with 2 degree alcohol we don't have any problem because 2 degree alcohols are always oxidized into ketone so 2 degree alcohol for all these molecules all these reagent will always give us acid ketones so oxidation method is very useful for preparation of aldehyde ketone as well as carboxylic acid the next method for preparation is cyanide reduction which is known as stefans reduction now this is again a selective reduction why selective because cyanide group is having three carbon nitrogen bond and we are reducing only one pi bond using tin and scl which combinedly gives us new compound stannic acid which here is behaving as a reducing agent a weak selective reducing agent so this reduce only one pi bond and gives us an imine gives us an imine now this um imine on hydrolysis as we have discussed earlier will be converted into double bonded o which is aldehyde because reduction will always give hydrogen here so you can see from these reactions that cyanide can be converted into ketones using grignard reagent as well as cyanide can be converted into aldehyde using this stefans reduction now the next reduction is rosenmund reduction and this is the most important most useful reaction of this chapter in preparation section that rosenman reduction involves acid chloride carboxylic acid derivative reduction into aldehyde and we know that reduction of aldehyde further will gives us 1 degree alcohol because oxidation gives alcohol to aldehyde and we have to stop this reduction that's why the reducing agent is here is palladium and hydrogen 
these are reducing this chlorine and converted it into aldehyde but if we are using only palladium and hydrogen the aldehyde will be further reduced this pi bond will be further reduced into alcohol group so what we use here we use a poison here and this poison reduces the catalytic activity the catalytic activity is reduced which will stop the reaction at aldehyde step only and this boiling xylene is here acting as a solvent acting as a solvent now the next reaction methods are mainly for uh, our aromatic aldehyde and ketone so for aromatic ketones we use the friedel craft reaction which is a very common reaction for hydrocarbon chapter you have already studied this reaction we use acid halide and a lewis acid this lewis acid abstract the halogen and gives us acyl carbonium ion now benzene being a nucleophilic center attacks on this carbonyl ion and convert it into aromatic ketones aromatic ketones so this is a one of the useful method for preparation of aromatic ketones having a benzene ring and similarly aromatic aldehyde are also prepared using etard reaction which is a chromyl chloride oxidation we here use the chromyl chloride in first step and water in the second step hydrolysis and irrespective of the length of the chain the length of the chain whether it's be methyl ethyl propyl any alkyl chain is present here all of these chain are converted into cho group only so here we always get benzaldehyde aldehyde so that's how we can prepare aromatic ketone as well as aromatic aldehyde now let's discuss about the chemical properties of these compound so the chemical properties are quite simpler we have carbon double bond oxygen oxygen being a greedy atom electronegative atom take the pi electron density towards itself which makes its electron rich and carbon as electron deficient now what will carbon do because it is having deficiency of electron so it will ask someone else to help and that's why a nucleophile comes and helps the carbon but hidden from the eyes of oxygen hidden from the eyes of oxygen otherwise oxygen will repel the nucleophile and that's why here the attack take place from back side and if the back side attack is taking place one thing we can be sure of that aldehyde and ketone having less steric hindrance will be more reactive will can easily have the nucleophile attack on them from the back side so that's why aldehydes are always more reactive than ketone for this type of reaction in the next step as the nucleophile is attacking oxygen will take away all the electron towards itself now oxygen also wants an electron deficient so its attack on an electrophile and finally instead of pi bond two new groups a nucleophile and electrophiles are added so that's why th such reactions are called as addition reaction addition reaction and as the nucleophile is attacking first so these are called as nucleophilic addition reaction nucleophilic addition reaction now what happens with the reagent we can add hcn NaHSO3 alcohols ammonia derivatives and many more reagents most of the reaction of this chapter are belonging to the section of nucleophilic addition reaction and remember whenever there is addition always we get an alpha substituted product because the addition takes place at the alpha carbon so when we add hcn h is the electrophile cyanide is the nucleophile we get this molecule alpha hydroxy cyanides which are known as cyanohydrin because these are having cyanide group as well as hydroxide group we can add sodium hydrogen sulfite so h is added to oxygen and so3na is added to carbon this is an adduct which forms a precipitate and because the nucleophile here is quite bulky and that's why most of the ketone does not give these reaction most of the ketone does not give this addition reaction we can add alcohols 
So first we add, we get H on the oxygen and OR on the carbon. And then in the next step, again, one mole of alcohol replaces the remaining OH group. And that's why such compounds are called as acetal or ketals. For aldehyde, the name will be acetals. And for ketones, the product will be called ketal. And this is the halfway step. And that's why these are called as hemiacetals, hemiacetals or hemiketals. Now, in the, if we add, want to add the ammonia derivative, so this is the reverse of the hydrolysis. When we hydrolyze carbon double bond N, we get carbon double bond O. Similarly, if we give ammonia or NH2 group to carbon double bond O, this water is removed and we get carbon double bond N. So when we give it ammonia derivative, this oxygen and this hydrogen is removed as water and we get carbon double bond N and Z can be any group depending on the this molecule. So on basis of Z, different products are formed. We can see here, if Z is H, the compound is ammonia, the product will be carbon double bond N, that is imine. If NH2 and OH, Z is hydroxyl, this is known as hydroxyl amount, amine, and the compound is known as, product is known as oxine. In case of hydrazine, the product is hydrazone. In case of semicarbazide, the product is semicarbazone. It is having a urea group. In case of phenylhydrazine, the product is phenylhydrazone. Only have to replace zine with zone. In case of 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine, the product is 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazone. Hydrazone. Also, this 2,4-DNP product always gives characteristic colors and that's why this is used as 2,4-DNP test of aldehyde and ketone. Any compound having aldehyde or ketone group will give you positive 2,4-DNP test. Now the next reaction is a very useful reaction which is aldol condensation. Condensation of two carbonyl molecules, whether same or different, having at least one alpha hydrogen in presence of a basic medium. And the product can directly be formed you have to take one carbonyl group, functional group, and another group as alpha hydrogen group. Now this alpha hydrogen, this carbon attacks on the functional position. And the functional carbon on which the attack is taking place, its carbonyl is converted into alcohol. So what will happen? This carbon will lose one of its H. and this functional group carbon will be converted into alcohol group. So we get an beta hydroxy compound. You can see here, this is a beta hydroxy compound and this is known as aldol. This is known as aldol. So aldol condensation product can directly be formed by this method, attacking attack of alpha carbon of one molecule onto the functional group carbon of another molecule. And if this aldol is heated, it can lose one more water molecule and forms unsaturated unsaturated carbonyl compound and always remember the new bonds will always be formed between alpha and beta position of the product alpha and beta position of the product so this is a very useful reaction of aldol condensation if we have same molecule this will be the intramol intermolecular aldol condensation if we are having different molecule it will be known as cross aldol condensation so we study self and cross aldol as well. And what happens when an aldehyde or carbonyl group does not have any alpha hydrogen? In that scenario, the same basic medium gives us the Canizaro reaction. So Canizaro and aldol condensation are two similar type of or parallel type of reaction occurring over different carbonyl molecules. If there is no alpha hydrogen, the basic medium gives us the disproportionation. One of the molecule is oxidized into carboxylic acid salt because of the basic medium, salt is formed. And one of the molecule is reduced into alcohol. So we get a disproportionation 
reaction and also the transfer of H minus from one molecule to another molecule is the rate determining step for this reaction is the rate determining step for this reaction also if we are having formaldehyde and any other carbonyl having no alpha hydrogen so in canizaro reaction of these molecules always always the formaldehyde molecule is oxidized always the formaldehyde molecule is oxidized and the another molecule is reduced into alcohol reduced into alcohol now tolens and felling test are the two important test of aldehyde and ketones and both of these are mild oxidizing agents tolens reagent is our ammonical silver nitrate ammonical silver nitrate solution and felling's reagent is our mixture of two solution known as felling a and b felling a and contains copper ion ammonical copper nitrate solution and felling b contains sodium potassium salt of tartaric acid sodium and potassium salt of tartaric acid this is commonly known as rochel salt rochel salt now felling is weak oxidizing agent and tolens is also a weak oxidizing agent felling can reduce only can oxidize only aliphatic aldehyde and cannot oxidize aromatic aldehydes or ketone ketone we already know does not get oxidized so in case felling test we use a copper oxide and is as a result we get red precipitate of q plus oxide so any compound giving red precipitate of q plus oxide with felling solution confirms the presence of an aliphatic aldehyde group and for tolens if we get a silver mirror it confirms the presence of aliphatic or aromatic aldehyde group aliphatic or aromatic aldehyde group now let's move on to the last section of this chapter which is carboxylic acid so carboxylic acid can be prepared we have already seen the hydrolysis of cyanide the hydrolysis of cyanide hydrolysis of any acid derivative where this g group this g group is replaced by oh oxidation of alkyl benzene to give us benzoic acid in ethyl reaction we had used chromyl chloride here we use the strong reagent KMnO4 similar case is here that irrespective of carbon chain length methyl ethyl propyl all these length will only give us carboxylic acid group oxidation of 1 degree alcohol using a strong oxidizing agent either KMnO4 or K2Cr27 and Grignard reagent on reaction with CO2 gives us carboxylic acid so all of these reaction we have already seen somewhere before in the chapter and the chemical properties of carboxylic acid involves first dehydration with P2O5, reaction with alcohol, and reaction with ammonia. All these reactions replace the OH group of carboxylic acid and gives us the acid derivative. So acid derivatives can be formed from acid as well as acid can be formed from acid derivatives hydrolysis will convert all of derivatives into carboxylic acid so dehydration will give us acidic anhydride reaction with alcohol will replace this OH group and gives us ester reaction with ammonia first form a salt because of acid base reaction and this salt will be further converted into acid amide acid amide RCONH2 And similarly, if we use PCl5, PCl3 or SOCl2, again OH is replaced by Cl and we get acid chloride. And this is a very special reaction which is known as hellwellard zelensky reaction. Where in presence of red phosphorus and chlorine, red phosphorus and chlorine, we get alpha substituted, alpha halogenated carboxylic acid. So this is a very important reaction of carboxylic acid. And soda lime, which is a mixture of nothing but NaOH and calcium oxide, caustic soda and lime, will give us decarboxylation and alkane will be formed. See, the carboxylic group will be removed as CO2 group. So these are the common reactions of carboxylic acid.
Now let's understand the acidication. This on this the various questions have come in the previous exams, and the acidic strength is determined by the stability of conjugate base carboxylate ion, which is resonance stabilized. So resonance is common for both. Resonance is common for both aromatic as well as aliphatic carboxylic acid. What differentiate them? That in presence of an electron withdrawing group. This negative charge will be withdrawn and extra stability will be provided. So any minus i or minus m group, minus i is a distance dependent. So minus i or minus m group increase the acidic strength of carboxylic acid. That is, chloroacetic acid will be more acidic than acetic acid because of the presence of minus i chlorine group. And electron donating group will increase the negative charge decrease the stability and that's why it decrease the acidic strength so any plus i and plus m group will decrease the acidic strength of carboxylic acid group and one more thing that you have to remember that whenever we have benzoic acid the presence of any bulky group on ortho position make this out of plane send this carboxylic group out of plane the resonance is inhibited and acidic strength is increased acidic strength is increased and this is known as ortho effect so any ortho substituted benzoic acid is always more acidic than its para or meta counterpart para or meta counterpart now let's move to amines amines is the next chapter that we are going to discuss and amines are classified students on the basis of their degree of nitrogen, the carbon chain attached to nitrogen atom. So when nitrogen and atom is having one carbon chain, this is known as primary amine. NH2 group will be present in primary amine. Nitrogen atom having two carbon chain is known as secondary amine. And nitrogen atom having three carbon chain is known as tertiary amine. And the basic strength depends upon the degree as well as the extent of hydrogen. So plus I should be more for basic strength and hydration should also be more. Now we know the three alkyl group will do more plus I and one alkyl group will do less plus I. Inductive effect will be less for one carbon chain. But the presence of hydrogen, the more hydrogen are present here, and presence of more hydrogen will give this more hydration. And presence of less hydrogen here will give less hydration, less interaction with solvent. Now, one degree and three degree, both are having one factor supporting their basic strength and one factor opposing their basic strength. So in order to see the balance, this two degrees having appropriate amount of both the effect, inductive and hydration, that's why two degree amines become exceptionally more basic than their counter one degree and three degree amines. So commonly for basic strength of amine, the order is two degree more than three degree more than one degree. This is the common order for their basic strength. Now let's move on to the next section, which is method of preparation. So amines can be prepared by the reduction. First, let's see the reduction. Reduction of various nitrogen compound using suitable reducing agent. In case of acid amide, the reducing agent must be strong, otherwise cyanide will be formed. So the reducing agent is taken as lithium aluminum hydride, which reduces it into directly amine, RNH2. Rx on ammonolysis gives us primary, secondary, tertiary. This we have discussed in haloalkane chapter, Hoffman ammonolysis method. Alcohol on reaction with ammonia, the reverse of hydrolysis will give you amine and the hydrolysis of amine will give you alcohol. Acid amide on Hoffman bromamide degradation reduces the carbon atom by one and gives us, gives us the uh, amine group. Now see the difference here in the reduction method using lithium aluminum hydride. The number of carbon atoms remain unchanged. But in the reduction using bromine and base, the carbon atom is reduced. That's why this reaction is known as degradation. Hoffman bromamide degradation reaction. And a thalamide compound on reaction with base 
then alkyl halide SN2 type and hydrolysis gives us primary amine. And this reaction all can only gives us primary amine because this nitrogen is having one hydrogen only. And this hydrogen is replaced using this alkyl group of halide. So one hydrogen can have only one carbon chain. That's why Gabriel thalamide is used only for the preparation of one degree amines. Amines on reaction. The chemical properties of amine are quite simple. On Rx, they give us nucleophilic substitution because nitrogen is a very powerful nucleophile. On reaction with acid derivative, again, this replace with the chloroform and KOH, we get a obnoxious smelling compound. Obnoxious smelling compound. Which is alkyl isocyanide. And this is known as carbyl amine test for primary amine. Carbyl amine test of primary amine. And this test can only be given by primary amine with the chloroform and any base. In reaction with HNO2 or mixture of NaNO2 and SCL, we get a diazonium compound, our N2 plus compound, but for aliphatic, the diazonium is quite unstable and converts into alcohol. And for aromatic, this diazonium is stable at low temperature, at ice cold temperature. 0 to 5 degrees Celsius. So diazonium compound of aromatic compounds can only be separated. For aliphatic, the diazonium salt is always converted into alcohol. And these diazonium compounds in case of aromatic are used for preparation of many compound because they can give nucleophilic substitution. The N2 plus takes the electron from benzene and gives a positive charge here. So for aniline, we convert it into diazonium. And this diazonium on reaction with copper, salt and HX converts into X benzene that is X replaces the nucleophile. Copper metal and HX gives the same result, but copper halide reaction is known as Sandmeyer reaction and copper and HX mixture is known as Gettermann's reaction. With Ki, only with Ki, not with KBr or KCl, only with KBi we directly get an iodobenzene substitute. But KBi and KCl cannot directly give this reaction. With hydroborofluoric acid, fluorine is attached on the benzene and this is known as bal shiman reaction. Remember, all the name reactions are very important. Questions are directly not asked on the reaction, but the application of reaction. So you must know how a reaction is proceeding, which is replacing what and how the reaction goes on. So question on the conversions, what happens when acidic strength, basic strengths are very common for your CBSC board exam. And diazo coupling in involves the presence of N double bond N with another activated benzene ring. So with alcohol, with phenol, we get a compound with orange color, which is known as orange dye. And for uh, aniline, we get a yellow colored compound, which is a yellow dye. So para substitution takes place on phenol as well as aniline because the diazonium is quite a bulky group. It cannot go into ortho position. If we see the reaction of aniline, so aniline is a highly activated ring. Because NH2 is a very strong activating group. And that's why this is mainly ortho and para directing group. So direct bromination gives us tribromo substituted group. Direct bromination gives us 246 tribromo aniline because of the highly activated position of ortho and para. So we deactivate with acetylation acetyl group deactivate this group deactivates the aniline by cross conjugation and then we on bromination gives us only mono brominated either para and ortho product and hydrolysis regenerates the aniline so similar to phenol anilines are also highly activated and they requires a deactivation for in order to get only ortho and para substitution. Otherwise, most of the time, both ortho and para positions are substituted simultaneously. With HNO3, 
that is nitration the main curious curious point here is that a meta substituted product is also forming which is higher in content from ortho substitution the major product is para then meta and least is ortho the reason here is that aniline is a basic molecule and the medium here is acidic so aniline form is salt anilinium ion aniline form is salt anilinium ion and this anilinium ion this anilinium ion makes it ortho meta and para directing it drives the group to ortho position meta position as well as para position and that's why here we are getting all the three products which is para meta and ortho and direct sulfonation gives us aniline sulfonic acid which is having both acidic and basic group so it is converted into a salt sulfate loses the h and amine group gains the h and this is a bipolar form having positive and a negative both functionality and this is known as zwitter ion this is known as zwitter ion now let's move on to the next chapter which is electrochemistry so electrochemistry involves the discussion of electrochemical cell and any cell which can convert electrical energy into chemical energy or vice versa is known as a electrochemical cell so here we have divided the chapter into two section one is of conversion of chemical energy that is a reaction into electrical voltage and such cells are known as galvanic cells and the another is conversion of voltage into a chemical energy or reaction and such reactions and cells are called as electrolytic cell so we will discuss the chapter into two section galvanic cell and electrolytic cell now what is a galvanic cell any cell contains mainly two compartment one where the oxidation occurs and another where the reduction occurs all the cells are here redox cell so the oxidation part is known as anode and the reduction part is known as cathode in galvanic cell at anode oxidation takes place that is the loss of electron and this electron production converts this into negative electrode so anode of galvanic cell is negatively charged and for electrolytic it will change the polarity and for cathode reduction occurs and the consumption of electron the gain of electron converts it into positive electrode and also in order to connect the two compartment a bridge is used which is known as salt bridge this is nothing but a inverted agar agar and kcl mixture solution in a inverted u tube agar agar and kcl mixture and the salt bridge has different function it connects the both compartment it neutralizes the anodic and cathodic compartment with excess charge and also it gives a path to the flow of current it completes the circuit to complete the flow of current from anode from cathode to anode in the external circuit also it avoids or reduces the production of liquid junction potential which is harmful for a galvanic cell now the galvanic cell we define a term which is known as electromotive force of the cell that is a voltage that we are actually getting from the cell so the emf is defined as the potential difference the potential difference generated across the terminal anode and cathode of a cell in open circuit is known as is known as emf or electromotive force of the cell so e not cell can be defined as e not cathode minus e not anode in the terms of reducing potential in reducing potential terms the difference between cathode and anode compartment and delta g gives energy change are also calculated using this e not value that actual work that we can obtain from a cell so delta g is basically the maximum electric work that can be obtained from a given cell and delta g not is defined as minus n f e not cell where n is the number of electrons that are being flown and f is the faraday constant charge on 1 mole of electron and the value of f is 96500 coulomb per mole coulomb per mole 
and if the process is to be spontaneous we already know that delta g gives energy change free energy change should be negative so if delta g should be negative the negative sign is already here so for a spontaneous galvanic cell e not cell should be positive so in simple word the cell giving you the positive voltage is spontaneous and the cell giving you the negative voltage is non spontaneous also the electrode potential of a cell depends on various factor what factor it could be it could be electrolytic nature it could be mobility of the ions it could be resistance of the cell the itself internal resistance it could be ph of the solution the temperature of the solution and as well as the concentration of iron so we use the nernst equation in order to find the relation between e and concentration rest other factors are considered as constant so nernst equation gives us the relation between e versus concentration and the relation re relation is something in the original form is this e not minus 2.303 rt upon nf log q where q is the reaction quotient as we already known how to write it in equilibrium chapter now this r is gas constant t is the absolute temperature which is 298 kelvin f is faraday constant so all these known values after putting gives us the usable form of the nernst equation which is e is equal to e not cell minus 0.0591 by n log q and at equilibrium we know that the cell will not give any useful work so e is equal to 0 delta g 0 and reaction quotient is equal to equilibrium constant so we get a relation between equilibrium constant in e not cell which is e not cell my is equal to 0.0591 divided by n n which is the number of electron into log k if we talk about the reference cell why we use the reference cell because we can only find the potential difference between two terminal we cannot find the potential of individual terminal so in order to find the potential of half cell we consider the other half to be zero point and that zero point is known as reference electrode and this is mainly standard hydrogen electrode standard hydrogen electrode it involves a inverted tube which have the hydrogen gas flowing in a solution containing the h plus ion so this involves the hydrogen h plus couple and to maintain the connection a platinum wire is dipped and this can be converted to the other half of any cell and the hydrogen electrodes is standard potential is taken as zero so by connecting the hydrogen electrode with some other half cell as the cathode we can directly find the potential of cathode the e not value of cathode by calculating the by observing the cell potential using either a voltmeter or a potentiometer because this is taken as zero so for hydrogen electrode the e not value is taken as zero but e value is not zero and it is ph dependent the formula is 0.0591 into ph if we are talking about the oxidation potential if we are talking about the reduction potential the sign will be inverted it will become minus 0.0591 into ph now let's come to the electrolytic cell so electrolytic cell just does the opposite that it converts the electrical energy to a chemical reaction so cation moves towards a terminal with this is known as cathode and it is of negative polarity here and anode is of positive polarity here that is the sign have been reversed in this cell cation goes towards the cathode anion goes towards the anode the name can be learned very easily using this cation goes towards the cathode and get deposited anion goes towards the anode and also get deposited so we get a electrolysis electrolytic reaction in an electrolytic cell using electrical energy and this cell is governed by two very useful laws known as faraday's laws of electrolysis the first law states that the mass is proportional to the amount of electricity passed or it's obvious that as much as the electricity is passed the more amount will be deposited 
and the second law says that the mass deposited is always in the ratio of equivalent mass if the charge is same so we can have the first law which is mass deposited is equal to z into q where q is the amount of electricity and z is the electrochemical equivalence z is the electrochemical equivalence and for the second law if we are having same charge that is same electricity is part then in different solution the mass liberated will be in the ratio of their equivalent weight and for solutions we must know their electrical parameters like resistance the hindrance specific resistance the specific hindrance conductance the ease with current can flow conductivity so conductance is the opposite of resistance with the unit of ohm inverse or simon conductivity is the opposite of resistivity with the unit of simon per meter and we know r is equal to rho l by a now for a given cell l by a the length between the electrodes and the area of electrode is constant because we don't change the cell construction so for a given cell l by a ratio is constant and this is known as cell constant g star and on reversing this relation we get g g star is equal to kappa where kappa is the conductivity kappa is the conductivity here we also define the molar conductivity conductivity per unit mole so when we find to have we have to find the molar conductance it is 1000 kappa by molarity in the unit of simon centimeter square per mole and for equivalent conductivity it is 1000 kappa by normality in the unit of simon centimeter square per equivalent the questions come in directly formula based you just have to put the right value with the right unit here the unit plays a very vital role so remember the units take caution of the unit that whether it's simon per meter or simon per centimeter that in this unit kappa should always be in simon per centimeter then only we, you will get the answer in simon centimeter square per mole so take care of the unit and when we increase the dilution the ion get separated the volume increases and the length increases and that's why the conductivity decreases but the conductivity per unit mole increases so on increasing the dilution the kappa decreases but del m molar conductivity increases for a strong electrolyte the increase is linear but for weak electrolyte because dil on dilution increasing alpha will also increase for weak electrolyte so at infinite dilution when dilution is maximum the conductivity is maximum and this maximum conductivity is known as limiting molar conductivity limiting molar conductivity and this limiting molar conductivity is calculated using colosh law now what does the colosh law say it has a simple meaning a simple observation that when you are having infinite dilution everything is separated away one ion will not affect the movement of the another ion that is at infinite dilution the conductivity can directly be considered as the summation of each individual ion without the hindrance of other ion so this is the meaning of colosh law that the equivalent conductivity of an electrolyte at infinite dilution is equal to the sum of the conductance of the anions and cations both anion and cation will move on its own without any interference and will give the contribution in the conductivity so if we have a electrolyte ax by type it will give x mole of a ion and y moles of p anion so its limiting molar conductivity conductivity at infinite dilution will be equal to sum of molar conductivity of net a ions and molar conductivity of net b ions and this can be a useful tool in order to find the conductivity of electrolytes molar conductivity of electrolytes now the last topic of this chapter is electrochemical series this is a very very important topic here we arrange the elements in the increasing or decreasing order of their reduction potential 
lithium has the most negative reduction potential hydrogen has the zero reduction potential because we have taken that as reference and fluorine is having a most positive reduction potential and as the reduction potential decreases that is the we go towards the negative side the reducing power increases tendency to form anode increases and as we go down the oxidizing power increases that is fluorine is the best oxidizing agent and tendency to form cathode increases so by using the electrochemical series we can judge which metal or non metal will be a good reducing agent or oxidizing agent and in the given redox couple which will be forming anode and which will be forming cathode also we can judge about the product of electrolysis that which um, product will be formed or which cation or anion will deposit first while electrolysis because for cation the srp should be high and for anion the srp should be low for their deposition at respective terminal now let's discuss the chapter chemical kinetics which specifically deals about the rate of reaction and rate is always defined the change with respect to time so here we define two different type of rate one is average rate and the another is instantaneous rate what is the difference between these two rates in average rate we take the overall change of concentration with the time and for instantaneous we shorten the time duration to a very small limit and it becomes in differential form here we also have used minus and plus sign simultaneously because for reactant the rate will come out to be negative and in order to final answer to be positive we apply a negative sign extra for reactant so when we are talking about the rate for reactant it will be taken with a minus sign and for product the rate sign will be taken as positive now here we have three different type of rate laws which discuss about the rate with different terms and the first rate law is differential rate law which is based on stoichiometry it relates the rate of reaction with rate of individual reactant and product we already know for a given reaction suppose we have a reaction pa p moles of a q moles of b gives r moles of c and s moles of d so the amount will always be in the ratio of stoichiometric coefficient so their rate will always be in a ratio of their stoichiometric coefficient so rate of reagent of a here a minus sign will be there divided by coefficient p will be equal to rate of disappearance of b divided by coefficient q will be equal to rate of appearance of c divided by coefficient r will be equal to rate of appearance of d divided by coefficient of d which is s and as all these terms are equal so these terms are called as overall rate of reaction overall rate of reaction so rate of reaction and rate of disappearance and appearance are different terms which can be related using differential rate law remember as stoichiometry is valid for mole only so the rate will also be in the terms of mole only not in terms of mass the second law is rate law which relates the rate with the concentration as the rate of reaction depend on various factor it can be nature of reactant some are reactive some are less reactive it can be temperature of the reaction it can be ph of the reaction it can be a catalyst which can alter the rate of reaction or it can be the concentration of reactant so keeping all other things constant the rate law specifically deals with dependence of rate on the concentration of reactants what it says it says that rate of a reaction is directly proportional to rate of reaction is directly proportional to concentration to the power some coefficient which are known as order of the reaction x and y can be or cannot be equal to this stoichiometric coefficients so they are some experimental term which are determined experimentally only x is known as order of reaction with respect to a while y is known as order of reaction with respect to b and k here the proportionality constant is known as rate constant velocity constant or specific rate of the reaction rate constant velocity constant or specific rate of the 
reaction. Now, the rate law can be determined and using the rate law, we can find the unit of rate constant. So, if we take only one reaction and the overall order is n, so we know that unit of k will depend on this n. So, from n, from order, we can find the unit of k and from the unit of k, we can find the order of reaction, which is very useful for solving the question. Sometimes they give you the unit of rate constant and expect you to know the order of reaction because order cannot be determined theoretically. So, for zero order, if we can see from here, k will be rate, which will be molar per second because it is change in concentration per second. Concentration, which is molar to the power n, so it will come out to be molar to the power 1 minus n second inverse. So, for zero order n is equal to 0, the rate will be molar per second, n, ki n can be replaced by 0. For first order, n will be 1, it will come out to be second inverse. For second order, it will be molar to the power minus 1, second to the power minus 1. And for nth order, the general expression is molar to the power 1 minus n, second to the power minus 1. So, by comparing the rate constant unit, we can calculate the order of reaction. Another rate law is known as integrated rate law, which gives us the relation between concentration of reactant and time of the reaction elapsed. So, integrated rate law is determined for each order separately. For zero order, we have the relation R is equal to K times of concentration to the power zero because the order is zero. So, it is concentration independent. So, on integrating the rate law, we will get the equation which is A naught minus a t is equal to k t where a naught is the initial concentration a t is the final concentration t is the time so by putting the time we can get the final concentration and relate it to the time elapsed also we define a half life which is the time for half consumption so in order to find the half life we put t is equal to half life and in that time the final concentration will be half of initial concentration because half-life remains 50% completion. So, we put the values in this law and get the relation as, here the relation is misprinted. The half-life for zero order is initial concentration divided by twice of k. Initial concentration divided by twice of k. We can also make the graph for these three. R is constant because concentration is disappearing from this expression to the power 0. So, R versus time, R wouldn't change and R will be a constant line. This is a negative slope straight line. So, concentration of reactant will decrease with time in a linear fashion. In a linear fashion and slope will be minus k. Slope will be minus of k. And half-life is also initial amount dependent. The more amount we take, the more time it would take to get half. So, half-life will also increase with initial concentration. If we take more initial concentration, half-life will be more for zero order reaction. Similarly, we can find the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. The rate law will be R is equal to K times of A to the power 1 because the order is 1. On integrating it, we get the logarithmic expression log A naught upon a t is equal to k t upon 2.303 that is the concentration decrease exponentially with the time here and again for half life we can put a t is equal to a t is equal to half of initial when the time is half life when the time is half life and on solving we get the half life expression as 0 0.693 by k yes the half-life of first order is independent of concentration. It does not change with concentration. It remains constant. So, rate will decrease as the concentration. So, concentration decreases exponentially. Rate also decreases exponentially with time. And half-life remains constant with time. Half-life remains constant. Also, if we make the graph of log concentration versus time, it will be again a linear graph with negative slope of minus k by 2.303. Let's move ahead to Arrhenius equation which gives us information about rate constant. Because rate constant is also a factor which determines the rate of reaction and rate constant changes with temperature, catalyst and other factors. 
So Arrhenius equations give the relation of rate constant with a term known as activation energy. K is equal to A e to the power minus E A upon R T. Where activation energy is some extra energy for required by reactant in order to cross the minimum energy barrier to form the product. Each reaction has a barrier. The reactant molecule must cross that barrier in order to form the product. And they have some energy of their own and some extra energy is required. And that required extra energy is called as activation energy. If activation energy is less, the reaction can proceed easily. And that minimum energy barrier is called as threshold barrier. If we take the log of this expression, we will get log k is equal to log a minus e a upon 2.303 rt. The graph of log k versus 1 by t will give us a straight line with positive slope, positive intercept and negative slope, which is minus e a upon 2.303. So by taking the slope of this graph, we can also calculate activation energy in joule per mole or kilojoule per mole. So this is the type of question that are asked in the exam. They give you the change of K and using the rate constant, you can calculate the activation energy. Similarly, if we have K1 rate constant at T1, K2 rate constant at T2, then the log expression can be written in this form. Log K2 by K1 is equal to Ea upon 2.303 R 1 upon T1 minus 1 upon T2. And this is the very important expression for Arrhenius equation. In most of the exam, CBSC, whether it may be CBSC, NEET or JE, they give you some K changes that K increases or decreasing on with this temperature. They give you T1, T2 and the ratio of rate constant. And ratio of rate constant can be replaced by ratio of rate of reaction as well. And by putting the value of K2, K1, T1, T2, we can calculate the EA. And this is a trick that mostly the answer comes around 52 to 55 kilojoule per mole. For most of the reaction, the activation energy is of this order. But this can only be used for checking the answer, check, verifying the answer. That mostly activation energy is 52 to 55 kilojoule per mole. So this is a very important question for board perspective, at least of three marks question, where they want you to calculate the activation energy. And as we know, when we increase the temperature of a reaction, rate of the reaction increased by the increase of rate constant. So our temperature coefficient is defined, which is nothing but the ratio of rate constant at two temperatures, which have difference of 10 degrees Celsius. That is ratio of increase in rate of reaction with every 10 degrees Celsius rise in temperature. And this temperature coefficient is 2 to 3 for most of the reaction in between 2 to 3 and that's all about this chapter the chemical kinetics now students we are having a quick recap of all these four chapters and now you are soon be given with questions strategies and tricks to solve the question in your exam so be prepared for it do a quick detailed revision on your own and we will soon meet again with the remaining portion of chemistry term to slavery. Till then, all the best. Have a strong and motivated mind and keep studying till you get your goal. Thank you.